Hi, I'm Bill Falberg. The video you're about to see was performed on this 8 by 15 inch piece of Doug fir. As you can see, we got a nice straight flat rip through the 15 inch part. And what's more important, we got a great view of the blade self-correcting itself through a big tough cut. But before we get into that, let's look at the setup. The Falberg tracking and tensioning system works like this. You can see where the blade tension is taken up by two springs that allow the blade to flex even though there's a lot of tension being applied. It takes a lot of tension to keep a blade running straight on a big saw like this and that's why we use two springs. There's 30 inches of free travel between the top and bottom wheels and as you'll soon see the blade guides do very little to keep the blade running straight. It's the set angle of the blade itself, and if you watch closely, you'll see the huge gap between these guide rollers. They're set so the blade is just resting lightly against the left bearing. Now watch this entire cut closely, and you'll see the blade never changes in that alignment. It stays right there. But now watch the back edge of the blade as it works its way through. If you can see the thin streak of shiny blade down in the kerf, you can see it swaying from side to side as it crabs through the various cross grains in the wood. It's correcting itself because it can, and the blade's path of least resistance is between the top and bottom wheels with a lot of tension in between. So if you're having a hard time getting straight cuts, look at your blade's set angle, not the guides. And snugging the blade guides up to the wood really has very little effect when you're cutting through 15 inches of knotty wood. You may have noticed the kerf looks like it's crooked in places. It must be an optical illusion because the finished cut was perfectly flat. I think the dust and splinters are causing some shadows. We get that sometimes when swamp gas from a weather balloon gets trapped in a thermal pocket and reflects light from Venus. Now, the second video clip here was taken with the Fallberg saw cam. It shows the same piece of dug fur and the same 15 inch cut depth, but instead of a rip cut, we're going to cut a plug to see how tight we can twist the blade into a radius. The blade is 3 eighths, 2 tooth per inch with a wide set. This is where you really do need blade guides. There's no forward motion here at all. It's just a hard twist. And you can hear these guide bearings scream as they take the full force of the twisting action. I don't know if you can see it, but the guide bearings are set at the same wide gap as we used for the last rip video clip. The squares are half inch grid marks so you can get some sense of scale as we do this. It's interesting to note what an 8.56 degree set angle can do, even on 15 inch thick dug fur towards cutting tight circles. I took the saw straight out the end of the beam at the end of this cut because there were eight more similar cuts that were part of the blade test we did as part of a blade comparison. You can see that whole comparison test if you go to the resaw page and click on the link to From Bowls to Blades, a guide to resaw blades. I encourage everybody to print that out, give it to anybody who's uh, using a bandsaw. It'll solve a lot of your problems cutting thick wood. Thank you and goodbye.